What that does is it makes a section box in your default 3D view uh, around those elements. So see, it just made a section box around those selected elements. Oh, wow. To process that, if you are using Revit, if you're using BIM, every single design team should be doing this. I've got a lot of my architect friends out there. You are actually the ones who need to hear this more than anything. But right. keeping, even if you draft everything, you should still keep the model on in the view. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. scope box, what are yeah. they? Why would I use it? Is it yeah. relevant? <laughs> and I mean, honestly, there's, there's, there's a, there's, there's a reason um, why you haven't necessarily used them and really it's because their their major most common use is um is for part plans and and breaking a building into documented segments so to speak um and that's really i mean there's other uses for them but really that's pretty much the standard use of them so um so if i was to quickly build a building that we'll say is kind of big not, not huge, but so this is like 84 by 100. I'll put a couple walls, a couple more walls just for fun. All right, so, and then I'll hit F1. Okay, so, um, so, you know, we have this building here and if I was to put it on a sheet, right, so if I was to put this on a sheet, it fits at eighth inch, but maybe, maybe the building's even bigger, or maybe for some reason I need it to be at quarter inch, whatever. Right. And so it, it just barely fits at quarter inch. So, you know, that's where part plans come into play. And so if you don't use scope boxes, what you're inevitably doing is you're making, um, you know, ideally you're making dependent plans and you're just adjusting the, the crop regions. Right. So I'll probably let me make the building bigger so that it makes a little more sense outside of this. Let's do that. All right. So, so if I go on to a sheet here in, in obviously, uh, Chris, in, in, in residential situations, usually you don't run into this, usually not doing part plans. I will say that I have been on some jobs. Uh, I remember I did a, a house um, in in Greenwich that uh, was the size of a small school. Um, and, and we did we did actually have to have part plans and all that. But um, generally speaking, in the residential environment, you're not necessarily doing part plans. You might be doing call outs to you know detail plans, but these are actual, you know, when you want your actual plan view to fit and you can't, usually what we'll do is you'll have a overall plan with less detail and then you have part plans. But um, without scope boxes, the process would be, you know, obviously this doesn't fit on here. So the process would be essentially, you know, duplicating usually as a dependent, um, mainly because then you can, you can actually detail it up on here, which I'll show you in a second. So I'm just going to turn this into two parts. So I'm taking level one, I'm duplicating it. So we're going to call this part A and part B. So without scope boxes, you would kind of do this, right? You'd you take this and maybe you move it here. Maybe you draw a match line if you want. And we'll take this and we'll move it here. And the reason you do dependence is you can go back to this sheet um, and you can um, you can note up uh, on this sheet. So if I quickly drew dimensions like this on here and here and here, I'm, I'm dimensioning the the overall plan, but you'll notice it's actually going into the dependence. Right. So, so it lets you, it lets you annotate a, a, a drawing based on um, an overall view, but these are what you would throw on, on your sheet. So without scope boxes, right. Um, I'll delete that. You'll throw the dependence on. Right. And that is what it is. But as you can see, um, you know, I'm just randomly doing this, right. I'm, I'm making it line up. And if you had 16 stories and 14 parts, that would be a little much right <laughs> to do that for every single floor and every single part so what scope boxes allow you to do is is uh create you know scope areas um, so i'm going to delete those dependent views so instead of um you know just randomly creating the the view the crop regions what you'll do is you'll create a scope box and like i said this is one but this is probably the most popular popular use of them so here's one scope box, and I'm actually going to call this part A. I like to name my scope boxes what they are. Um, it's a good practice. And then I'm actually going to copy this. And we're going to call this part B. So I already did it. 
right? So part A and part B. So right now, all it is, is it's just a box. There's just, we haven't done anything with it, but what we're doing is we're, we're, we're representing those areas, you know, those scopes, which is, I guess why it's called a scope box um, in our project. There's also, um, this may be, this may be where um, Reggie got uh, burned and I, that's why I haven't checked yet, but um, there's visibility settings for your, for your specific for, for scope boxes. But what you'll read is it says they're automatically visible in 3D views and other views based on X, Y, and Z. And so for the most part, you're gonna see them in every view. But uh, what Reggie uh, is running into is that you'll see they're not automatically visible in elevations for whatever reason. Um, so <laughs> that may be the issue Reggie's running into and that's probably what I'll post as a response because he didn't post the file. But if I go in 3D, you'll notice they're actual 3D objects. So if this building was, you know, let's take these walls and let's, oh, I guess I should make levels, but uh, if this building was 34 stories tall, right, we can make this scope box go all the way up to the, to the top floors. And so we're using those same parts across it, okay? And how that reflects in a floor plan, for example, is I would do the same exact process, duplicate with dependent, and if you look at DIY Dynamo, I think the last example I have is duplicating views based on this, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, but what you can do is the views themselves, um, if you look closely under extents, they have a scope box setting. So I can automatically set this view to be that scope box and then this view to be that scope box. And they're defined by the scope boxes. So if I change the scope box, every single view region across the entire project that is assigned to that scope box will be reflected in that, right? So, so it's, it's, it gives you the ability to, um, and you can see this one moved over quite a bit. This is scope box B. So then it gives you the ability to set up part plans across your entire project. Um, something else that's kind of neat about it is, um, and this is a tip I think I had on the website at one point in time, um, is, uh, and again, this is the purpose for them, but I think it's helpful when you're working on large projects, if you select this uh, um, scope box, you can actually do a section, uh, a, a section by that, right? So, so you know, it creates a, a, a 3D section box based on what you select. If you do that, it actually creates a section box to the scope box, which is kind of cool. Um, that's pretty much the major use for them. Um, Jeff, so now, Jeff, so, can you, can you show how you did that section? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. So what I was doing is. Um, so, you know, if you select objects in Revit, right, you have the ability, um, and for those of you that don't know, now you will know, um, you have the ability, I'm just splitting these walls, so it's a smaller one, but um, when you select objects, a lot of them now, there's a, a little option under modify that says selection box, it's actually BX on the keyboard. What that does is it makes a section box in your default 3D view uh, around those elements. So see, it just made a section box around those selected elements. Oh, wow. So really that, that's the main purpose of a scope box. And I think what, what Reggie uh, was running into is they're not, notice you saw them in floor plan, you saw them in 3D, right? But, but I'm in my elevation and you don't see them, right? And so if you go in here, you're like, all right, well, let me check visibility and graphics. And you're like, oh, well, they're on. So it gets confusing because you're like, well, they're on and they're here. And then if you, even if you do this, they're not there. And that's because they have a default setting I go in here and go to edit that says they are not visible in elevations why i don't know don't know can you change it there yeah there's yeah. an override oh, there right here i see yeah. right there. sorry okay yes yeah. so uh what was that my north elevation so if i put visible in north elevation and to be honest uh i mean i i guess i guess you can see why because they kind of go like you know they might be a little annoying but also you may want to, you know, you may want to set your elevation to those because we do have larger projects sometimes that, you know, the, the elevations want to be set or want to have part plan elevation and so on. So you can do the same thing there. See, I just assigned this elevation to part A.